In this lesson, we will take a look at the new section of the GMAT Focus Edition, and that is the Data Insights section. So to start, let's just talk about how the section is structured. We know there are always 45 minutes total in every section of the GMAT Focus Edition, so that is not different here. The Data Insights section has the fewest number of questions, however, at 20. And that means an almost exactly two minutes and 15 seconds average and a four minute maximum for any individual question. Your data sufficiency format, which you may recognize from the legacy GMAT in the quantitative section is now present in the data insight section. You also have the four interactive question formats from the legacy GMAT's integrated reasoning section in the data insight section. And those are going to be graphics interpretation, multi-source reasoning, table analysis, and two-part analysis. You're going to have one to three questions per slide, and there is no partial credit given for any of these integrated reasoning style interactive question formats. You'll also, however, be given your four-function interface calculator for the data insights section in a similar fashion to what used to be the integrated reasoning section. Now, our strategic implications. You want to assume about 75% of the questions on the data insights section will be math-related in some fashion. You'll have to consciously engage with the information, although you'll want to recognize that oftentimes more information is given especially for the interactive question formats than is necessary to solve for the problem. Also recognize, and we'll be going through this here momentarily, that the pacing will vary by format, and you can trust the figures that are given in the graphics interpretation, multi-source reasoning, or two-part analysis formats as being drawn to scale for estimation purposes, so you can logically estimate here pretty liberally, and of course, and I cannot stress this enough, remember to use the interface calculator. The exam does provide more clumsy math here than in the other sections, so it's really incumbent upon you to remember that this calculator exists and to use it when the question here asks you to take 0.67% of 1,432. They don't expect you to actually do that math on the data insight section because you have the calculator provided. Now, the question logistics for data sufficiency are the same if you recognize this type, but you're going to only have approximately five data sufficiency problems in the 20 question data insight section. And you will still have five static options correlating to the single task of determining which condition is or which conditions are sufficient to provide a definitive answer to whatever the question was without necessarily solving to completion. And you'll still have two formats for data sufficiency questions on the GMAT Focus Edition, either value where you're being asked if one particular value is possible based on the information provided, or yes, no, which means that the answer is always yes or always no to the question that is provided. Strategically, you're going to first want to memorize the static choice definitions, and we'll talk about that in our data sufficiency lesson, but ultimately you don't want to be revisiting those answer choices on every problem. It's certainly still one of the primary question types that require prepping before taking the GMAT. If you don't know how these question types work, you'll spend more time trying to figure out what the answers are, so you'll have to memorize those choices. You're going to want to assume about two minutes per data sufficiency and a three-minute maximum for any. And you'll want to methodically evaluate these conditions in a consistent fashion so that you'll be able to get through it in a reasonable amount of time. You'll want to shorthand note your information that's provided by the given statement and the two individual conditional statements as technically as possible to help streamline your evaluation. And you do want to just beware of unnecessarily fully calculating to a solution because, again, the data sufficiency is asking, can the answer be arrived to? It is not asking you to arrive to an answer. Now on to the interactive format, starting with graphics interpretation. So you're going to have two to three graphics interpretation questions in the 20 question data insight section. You're going to have a single slide containing some figure or potentially multiple figures to interpret. 
there will be two to three questions per slide, and you must get each of those questions correct for credit on that slide. Now, strategically, you want to make these questions go faster as compared to some of the other interactive formats. You want to spend about two minutes per slide on graphics interpretation. You're going to have a hard three minute cap for any graphics interpretation slide. And you must engage the figure or figures first without looking at the question or questions to understand what's happening in the figure and figures. And that's going to be more important than figuring out what the question is. It's really the first time on the exam. It's going to be more important to understand the information than to understand the question first. And you'll want to proactively solve these questions to avoid wasting time revealing hidden answer choices. Now, you also have to remember, once again, that that interface calculator exists because these questions often have clumsy or complex arithmetic. Then we get to our multi-source reasoning, and you're going to assume two sets of three questions each for multi-source reasoning in the 20 question data insights section. You'll have two to three tabs of information, and these tabs will be static for three consecutive slides of questions. You'll have one to three questions per slide, and once again, you must get, credit, get each answer correct for credit on that slide. Strategically, you want to average about two and a half minutes per slide for the multi-source reasoning, but you can spend up to four minutes on the first slide if you need to engage with the tabs in their entirety to answer that question but you'll have a hard three minute max for the other slides of a multi-source reasoning question set. You'll want to here in identify the question task and the subject of that question before engaging the relevant tabs for pertinent information. For instance, if the first question of the set asks you about tab three only, focus solely on tab three. Make sure that you are strategically engaging the information here as opposed to assuming that you must read all of the tabs up front. You'll, however, want to take brief notes for the tabs as you go to figure out what in summary is contained on each of the tabs to limit future back and forth tabbing on subsequent questions. This is certainly a functionality that the test intentionally uses to get you confused in the moment by going back and forth. So if you can, as you engage the tabs, take an, a short note of what is there to limit when you engage for it being relevant information that will really help expedite your approach through these questions. And the multi-source reasoning set is going to be the last type of question to skip proactively if you're behind pace in the data insights section. And that is simply because very often, if you figure out the answer to one or two of the questions, the other questions, whether they're on subsequent slides or on the same slide, often become relatively apparent. So you really do want to avoid skipping the multi-source reasoning questions because you'll quickly end up missing nearly 20%, three questions in a row of the section. And you can see that in total, the multi-source reasoning sets are now more than 25% of the entire section for the data insights portion of the GMAT focus edition. Then we get to our table analysis. You're going to assume two to three questions of table analysis per 20 question data insight set. It's very likely that it's going to be two. It could even be one, but usually it's going to be two, could be three. So the table analysis is actually one of the places that the exam can be really adaptive from the, uh, from the perspective of the um, data insight section because the adaptivity it now groups table analysis and graphics interpretation in kind of a, a one size fits all category. Then you've gonna, you're gonna have one slide with that table to interpret and that table is sortable. You'll have two to three questions per table analysis slide. And as always, you must get each correct for credit on the slide. Strategically, you're going to want to assume probably under two minutes per slide as an average here for the table analysis. And you're going to have, once again, a hard three minute maximum for any slide. And much like the graphics interpretation categorical format that the table analysis is now being grouped in from a sorting perspective and an adaptive nature perspective for the data insights, you want to engage with the table first to understand the basics of it before moving on to the question tasks. You'll also really want to consider an initial sort that is useful 
to gain an understanding of the categories of information in the table. Very often, the initial sort is just alphabetical, and that doesn't really help, so you'll want to find a more intuitively useful sort. And once again, use that interface calculator for clumsy or complex arithmetic. And our last of the interactive formats is going to be two-part analysis, and you're going to have most likely four two-part analysis questions per 20-question data insight set. You're going to have a single slide containing a quantitative or verbal style scenario to evaluate. You'll have to make two selections per slide, and as always, you have to get each correct for credit on the slide. Strategically, much like multi-source reasoning, these tend to have more information here, so you're going to have a two and a half minute per slide assumed average, a hard four minute maximum for any slide, and you'll want to read and identify the question tasks and subject before engaging with the information because that will help you determine what is the relevant problem solving style math or critical reasoning reading comprehension style verbal tactics that are going to be necessary for you to address the scenario as presented. And this is going to be your first categorical format to guess and skip proactively if you're behind pace in the data insight se section. Remember, you still have those three questions that you can change at the end of the section. And the two part analysis questions may be the best candidate for you to try to make an educated guess in 30 seconds and skip if you have any concerns about finishing the section overall. So let's now just talk about some overall tips for the data insights section. First, as we were just discussing, you can allow some skips tactically to make sure you finish the entire section. You can allow up to two blind guess and skips probably on those two part analysis site, uh, style questions. And then remember to use the review screen where you can change up to three questions. Do allow yourself at least one on the fly skip, however, through the section, just in case something you know how to do is escaping you in the moment and ideally just pace well throughout. And that includes deliberately evaluating the graphics and tables on your first pass through them before even engaging the question tasks to avoid what I believe are relatively simple traps. They love to use what I tend to categorize as cheap tricks for the graphics and table interpretation, giving you the wrong answer that is uh, gonna happen because you evaluated the wrong axis or confusing percent increase versus percent decrease. They have tons of cheap tricks here, so just be deliberate on the upfront evaluation and execution there. You'll have to hold yourself to a single reread for any question, except for potentially multi-source reasoning when you're engaging tabs for multiple problems in the three question set to ensure that you're able to see everything in the section. And Focus on execution and process as we talk through them in our subsequent lessons to prepare for these what are inherently going to be unfamiliar tasks. The data sufficiencies are a unique question format that you only see on the GMAT, so you're not going to be familiar with them until you start practicing them. Same thing with all of the interactive question tasks. Make sure that you just understand how to engage and work through the problem knowing that on test day, it will be unfamiliar when you see that graphic that's new, when you see that table that's new, when you see that multi-source reasoning that's somewhat strange. And by using the execution and process that we talk through in these lessons, you'll be prepared no matter what they throw at you. Now, for strategy, we know that there's not a guaranteed order of the questions. So just broadly, after 10 questions, you need to have 20 to 25 minutes remaining. If you've had more graphics, tables, and data sufficiencies, then you might want to be closer to 25 minutes remaining, knowing that the multi-sources are to come. If, on the other hand, you've seen two multi-source reasoning sets before the 10 questions are done, you could be closer to 20 minutes remaining, knowing that those have been exhausted. And generally, there is kind of a difficulty level that's inherent. Usually, the graphics interpretation and the table analysis questions are just simply easier. It's not a guarantee, but it is something that you can kind of assume. And for that reason, be careful here. Don't allow easy points to be lost in the name of haste. And generally, the multi-source reasoning and two-part analyses can be harder for most folks. But again, recognize that once you understand what's happening, many of the steps will build on each other. So even they, though they may be harder, by working them consistently, you'll put yourself in a position to get those questions right. So. 
go ahead and review the future lessons on the individual question types that you'll see in this section and conduct some practice problems to improve at this kind of new, kind of just rearranged section that exists on the GMAT Focus Edition.